let's jump right into it. So the, our first story basically is it's going to be about the box office and what happened this last weekend and everything else. So as everybody may or may not have known, there was a little movie that came out this last two weekends ago, and it was The Flash. And so I know, guys, you guys are tired of talking about The Flash and hearing about The Flash. I get it. But the reason I bring this up is because here's the thing. This was one of the more significant drops of the year, okay? We had something like uh, 66% for Ant-Man. We kind of had, you know, Shazam didn't do so well. This fell off a cliff. This movie <laughs> fell off a cliff. So as anybody knows, okay, and everybody knows by now, one way or the other, this was about a 200 to $220 million budget. And it had been years and years and years in the making. The hype was up and up and up. And CinemaCon, it, it came out. It was really positive reviews and everything else. And it came out and it fell flat. I mean, it just fell flat. And it only made $55 million opening weekend. And you say, well, why that's why is that significant? It's significant in a couple of different ways. Okay. Number one, okay, because this was such a big budget. Okay. Number two, because this was so highly hyped up and widely wanted to be seen. And number three, frankly, it was a superhero film. Okay. I mean, take the Ezra Miller situation out of it. You have Michael Keaton coming back. I mean, this is Batman for everybody. I mean, this is one of the, I mean, he is the Batman. You know, this is the, I mean, I'm not talking about Adam West in 1966. This is Batman. And so, he's coming back and so you know you got the whole multiverse thing going on and it only made 55 million dollars the reason i say that is because this last weekend it fell an enormous whopping unbelievable 73 percent that's insane so put this in perspective okay two things number one amp in the wasp when it came out in march or February or March, okay, it made $108 million opening weekend. And then its second weekend made around $35 million. That was a 66% drop. That was the second largest for Marvel of all time, okay? Number two, this was the biggest drop. So there, there were been a couple other big drops. You had Black Adam that dropped 59%, and then you had Shazam Fury of the Gods that had dropped the other. Anyways, I want to basically get to the... Uh, article real quick so antonio says uh this is sad for me i love this movie so much and seeing it falling down a cliff is such a shame especially since it's the finale of the dceu and you have michael keaton returning yeah i mean there were there were a couple of things in it that just the film i mean truth be told when i came out of the film and i i did not like this movie at all i mean i've kind of tailored back a little bit understanding why and everything else and guys if you want to go watch the flash spoiler cast go Feel free to do that. But here's the article. This comes from the rap. This comes from my good friend here, Jeremy Fowler. Um, and this talks about the uh, box office for the weekend. Audiences are making it clear whether super, which superhero film uh, they preferred, the box office. And right now, that's Sony's Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And it's returned to the number one box office spot in its fourth weekend in theaters, while Warner Brothers of Flash suffered a 72% drop, the second worst to be soon with the DCEU. Across the Spider-Verse earned another $19.3 million this weekend, continuing its strong run as it passed $500 million in global grosses, earning this past weekend, with $317 million gross domestically. And that's huge. I'm going to get to what actually has been the top earners in a minute. In over 525 worldwide, Across the Spider-Verse is on the doorstep of passing 563.7 million dollars globally of the you know, the high the hybrid and cgi of, of the smurfs which was their largest sony's largest grossing film of all time the flash meanwhile has collapsed from the 55 million dollar opening to 15.3 million dollars suffering a second week drop of course in ant-man and the watch which i just made reference of which is much more room to fall than its $106 million opening, and the 70% drop of DC's James Gunn The Suicide Squad, which came out in the early stages of COVID back in August of 2020. 
2021. Now, truth be told, it was COVID. That movie, for anybody who's seen that movie, I loved that movie. And yes, it was it the Guardians with DC? Absolutely. But it was well done. It just, it hit all the notes. I mean, hell, we even got a Peacemaker series out of that, right? As noted in our box office analysis last week of the struggles of The Flash and DC's Pixar's Elemental, the DC's film suffered multiple problems, include tepid word of mouth, the deep disinterest between casual audiences in DC, and the lead star Ezra Miller's public scandal, which was unable to market. So there, there were a lot of things that went wrong with this film, okay? Depending on how Sunday shakes out, and this was done the other day, The Flash could be number four behind No Hard Feelings, which had uh, 15.1 at three, a little over 3,200 uh, theaters. With a reported $45 million before marketing, the Jennifer Lawrence star in No Hard Feelings still has a lot to, to do to turn a profit, but it has that younger demographic. It's like a Porky's in the 1980s. It's like an American pie. It's like a super bad sort of thing. And the film actually earned a B plus on cinema score, 68% from the critics, 88% from the um, audience. Number two at the box office. Sorry about that, guys. So anyways, basically it's, what it's going with is Elemental was number two. <laughs> yeah, no, I had a little technical difficulty. So essentially Elemental was number two. Okay. Elemental was number two. Okay. And that earned... Um, it earned basically around $15 million, okay? It had a budget of, um, so, okay, it basically opened at 20, it earned $18.5 million, okay? So the, it had about a 37% drop, and it expanded to 23 new markets, earning $31 million overseas, and it's made only 121 over uh, domestic. Okay, so here, here's what I'm getting at. Okay, I wanted to actually bring these numbers up for Spider Verse because Spider Verse is doing amazingly well. Okay, and so it's one of those things right now where I've said it before like the um, when one film really uh, falters, the other one is going to pick up slack. And that's what you're seeing right now for um, Spider-Verse and Elemental. And so that being said, it's one of those things. So right now, as it stands, okay, Spider-Verse is number three. Spider-Verse is number three right now at the domestic box office, okay? Um, and that's just an incredible, incredible feat in of itself. And that just shows you the, the staying power of something like that. And I think that, you know, we are now in a time where it is quality over quantity. And that being said, this was a quality film. There was nothing wrong with it. Now, it's interesting because Sony Animation, I don't have it in front of me, Sony Animation just put out a statement. So I see that, hey, Kevin, we're gonna actually get to that in our next story, July's preview. Um, I will read that in the next story, I promise. Um, so right now, the, the thing is that, um, Hey there, how are you? Nice, nice to, for you to join us. Um, so basically, right now, what has ended up happening? It is number three right now at the box office, okay, behind Guardians, which is only about fifteen, uh, about thirty-five million back. Okay, this is one of those films where we are going to start to see quality over quantity, and I think that that's a major factor in what um, what's going to be going on. And how it's going to be going now truth be told we do have another big movie coming out this weekend and that is indiana jones and 
So I'm going to be going to see that on Thursday. I'll, I'll give you the guys the schedule at the near the end of the show. But basically, it, this is another, this is one everybody's looking forward to. Okay. And um, Barbie Oscar nomination? Possibly. I'll, I'll talk about that. Give me a minute, Dad, and I'll, let me just finish the story because we're going to jump right into July. And I'll definitely talk about that. Um, but yeah, I think that this is one of those movies that that has a staying power. And um, it's going to continue to make money. And it's, I agree with you, Antonios, about one thing. It is sad. I never like to see films falter. I never, I never, ever, ever like to see films be bad. I don't. Because it's not, it's not right. Because everybody worked extremely hard in this movie and did what they needed to do and everything else. And it is sad. And I wouldn't be shocked, you know, and I don't mean to blow my own horn, but I had said that Shazam was going to be a, a litmus test for the, the Flash. And I believe the Flash is going to be a litmus test for Blue Beetle. Now, I'm not saying it's going to bomb like this, but we'll see what happens. I hope it does well because there's not a lot coming out in August. But I do think that there's going to be, it's going to prove to be very difficult to make money. So... I don't know. I, I think I think it's going to do well. I mean, it's it's a character, it's a brand new character, and everybody likes that. So, anyways, guys, what do you think about the Flash dropping seventy three percent? Do you think it's amazing? Do you think that you saw this coming? Or, and my other question, to you guys, is when do you think this is going to hit max? I think it's going to be on there July fourth. But when do you guys think it's going to hit max? Leave me your thoughts down in the comments, and I'll get back to everybody.